Excuse me. I bet watching me drink Coke was probably more exciting than Monday Night Raw, I bet you. You know, I, I, I don't understand this product. I, I really don't understand it. This company just does not know what they're doing. It's really getting ridiculous now. I've been a die-hard fan of WWE since 2004. And I have never been looked at as an idiot. Ever. I may have struggled to learn about the product. But goodness gracious, this company definitely knows how to treat you like a moron. I'll tell you that. We had Braun Strowman and his little dog hound or whatever the hell they're called. They were talking to all the heels at the start of the show. And there you see Kevin Owens. You see Kevin Owens standing there listening to Braun Strowman. So you're telling me that Kevin Owens, after everything that Braun Strowman put him through, he's just going to stand there and be okay with that? Being thrown off a steel cage, getting squashed in 90 seconds at Hell in a Cell, being nearly killed by, by, by being trapped in a portable toilet, being, having his car flipped over, having, being thrown off a ladder. So he's just going to stand there after everything Braun Strowman did to him. And he's just going to listen to Braun? I don't understand how anybody can say, oh. I don't understand how anybody would not recognize that. There's just a lot wrong with this show, man. There's just a lot wrong... And it's just silly, in my opinion. And before we get on to anything else, I want to quickly jump over onto Mick Foley. That Mick Foley made a, uh, well, I wouldn't call it a surprise because we kind of knew because WWE put it up on their YouTube, or not YouTube, WWE.com. They put it on WWE.com that Mick Foley was going to be here. Mick Foley announces himself. As the special guest referee of the Braun Strowman Roman Reigns Hell in a Cell match. You know, I just don't get it. Why now of all years? Why now of all years? So you get Mick Foley to be the special guest referee for this match, but not any other Hell in a Cell match. They, he, they, he, they could have had him, the referee of that women's one Charlotte and Sasha had. So you're telling me that they have, they have Mick Foley, the referee now. Again, he is being used to protect Roman Reigns. That's the reason why he's there. He's only there to be protected by Roman Reigns. So then that way Roman Reigns doesn't get booed. Yep. That, that, that's how I feel about it. And there's another thing. There's one more thing I want to talk about before I move on to the other stuff. One more. I've got one more thing. Last week we had Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler win the Raw Tag Team Championships, which I was very happy about. I believe that we didn't want the titles on the B-Team anymore. We all got sick of it being on the B-Team. But now, I think, but now, now it all comes clear to me. It all comes clear to me right now. The only reason why Ziggler and McIntyre 
are holding the Raw Tag Team Championships just to drop them to Seth and Dean. Because it was just announced at Hell in a Cell that Seth and Dean will team up to verse Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Now, I can't... Now, now of course, we all might be wrong. We might be wrong, and Ziggler and McIntyre may retain the Raw Tag Team Championships. But if you think about it, why would you give them the titles? If you are, Why would you give them the titles if you're just going to have them lose them to Seth and Dean? Seth Rollins is the Intercontinental Champion. He doesn't need to be a Tag Team Champion with Dean. Sure, sure, that's where Dean Ambrose last was in a Tag Team with Seth Rollins, and he was, you know competing in the tag team division, but didn't Seth Rollins say after when, like, didn't he say after when Jason Jordan got injured that he said that he doesn't want to be in the tag team comp competition anymore? If I remember correctly, Seth Rollins told Kurt Angle after when Jason Jordan got injured, he said he's sick and tired of being in the tag team division. He wants to move on to bigger and better things. So we got Seth Rollins being demoted back down to the tag team division. After when he clearly said earlier this year that he doesn't want to be there anymore. What, so just because Dean Ambrose is back, he's happily to be okay competing for the Raw tag team titles? He's got the Intercontinental Championship. WWE completely ruined everything with Dean and Seth. They easily could have had Dean Ambrose come back and be a heel. But no, they didn't want to do that. They wanted to continue be having Dean Ambrose being the babyface Dean Ambrose. But I will say he hasn't been the typical Dean Ambrose we've always seen him as. He hasn't been smiling. He hasn't been, you know, he hasn't really been cringe Dean Ambrose as a face. He's actually been a pretty serious babyface since he's come back. So that is one big major difference. But Drew and Dolph, you know, Dolph Ziggler, ever since he's come over to Monday Night Raw from the Superstar Shake-Up, he's definitely had, he's definitely had a better, he, he's got a new leash on life. He, he's, he, he probably feels alive that he's finally being put in big storylines and being treated like how he should always be treated as a competitor, as a champion that goes out there and competes, shows the world why he's the best at what he does. Intercontinental champion, now he's Raw Tag Team champion with Drew McIntyre. You know, th th this is probably the best. This is probably the best amount of accomplishments he's ever had in his career. Yes, maybe his biggest accomplishment is winning the World Heavyweight Championship. Back in 2013. But right now you would think that maybe he'll look at this as his greatest accomplishment. Because he's actually staying relevant. He's He's been staying relevant. And he hasn't really been dropping off the radar. He hasn't dropped off the radar since he's come to Raw. He's been in big storylines of Drew McIntyre. As for Roman Reigns, WWE continue, continue to show us why Roman Reigns is not what he says he is. When Roman Reigns won the Universal Championship, he said, and I heard it with my own two ears, that he said these following words. Actually, you know what? I'm going to, you know I'm going to do this. I'll be with you guys in a sec. My NXT title is going to make a cameo appearance. I clearly heard Roman Reigns say this. I will defend my title every week and prove why. I am a better champion than Brock Lesnar.
He's only defended the title once. Sorry about that, I got interrupted, but... But yeah! Roman Reigns has only defended the title once. He's only defended the title once. Since he won it. He said he would defend the title every single week. That means every Raw, he turns up and he defends it. And yet, and yet I have a, and, and yet my best friend is the biggest Roman Reigns fan ever. And he's too delusional to think, he's too delusional to think that, that Roman Reigns is still better than Brock Lesnar. But Roman clearly said that he would defend his title every single week. No matter where he goes, he would defend his title. Everywhere. And I believe Ronda Rousey said the exact same thing. That she'd be a fighting champion. And both have failed to prove that they are really fighting champions. Especially Roman Reigns. Roman is being used to be protected as always. As always, he's being protected. I just don't understand how people can accept the way that WWE is booking Roman Reigns. How stupid can you be? How stupid can you be to actually believe that Roman Reigns is a fighting champion just because he's showing up? Seriously. That's how my friend. That's how I feel my friends operate, and that's how other people operate. They think just because Roman Reigns is there every week, he's a fighting champion. No, you're a fighting champion by defending your title. Whether if it's every week, whether if it's every pay per view, it doesn't matter. If you're a fighting champion, you go out there and do it. And you go out there and you prove why you're a fighting champion. Look what Seth Rollins did when he became Intercontinental Champion. He was defending his title. Every single Raw, and even at every single pay-per-view, he did. He defended that title. That is how a true champion works. A true champion does not just show up. A true champion shows up and defends the title. Doesn't matter if it's a pay-per-view. Doesn't matter if it's Raw. Doesn't matter if it's SmackDown. You show up and defend your title. It's clear as day that Roman Reigns is just is just like everyone else. They're just they're just holding the title for the sake of holding it and not really living up to what they just said. So Roman Reigns is not a fighting champion. And he's definitely not a fighting champion considering that he's not defending his title at the Super Showdown. Good job. Anyway, that's pretty much my little opening rant that I have for you guys with my few... Well, I've got more issues, but we'll, we'll get to them as we go along. The first match of the night was Nikki Bella versus Ruby Riot. Huh. Okay, let's see how... Okay. How did this match come about? Oh. This match came about because Ruby Riot went into her locker room and trashed her locker room. Look, I like Nikki Bella. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You're kidding me. So if someone <laughs> damaged my room, so if someone came in here and ruined my room, I should go out. So if someone destroyed my, my room, I should go out and have a have a fight with this person that destroyed my room. <laughs> oh my god. My god, are you serious? If someone came in and wrecked my room, I would clean it up. I'd clean it up and I and I and I'd refix it. 
So Nikki Bella is basically behaving like like what a typical five-year-old would do. Oh, someone ruined my room. I'm going to make them pay. So Nikki Bella has a match with Ruby Riot. And Nikki Bella wins. R.I.P. Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot's now buried, ladies and gentlemen. Ruby Riot is now buried. And it's it's a darn darn shame. It's a darn shame, I'll tell you that. It's a very darn shame. And I have so and, and so and I asked a few of my friends. I asked a few of my friends about this as well. I asked a few of my friends, are you happy that Ruby Riot just got buried? And guess what? A few of my friends said, yeah, yeah, I'm happy Ruby Riot's buried. I'm definitely happy Ruby Riot is buried. Look, I may not be Ruby's biggest fan. But I do like her ring skill. She's a very talented wrestler. But there is no reason to tell me that you are thrilled that Nikki Bella just buried Ruby Riot on Monday Night Raw. You're telling me you would prefer Ruby Riot being buried? What's wrong with her being a superstar? What's wrong with Nikki Bella actually putting Ruby Riot over? Apparently there's a lot wrong with it because people tend to be okay with Ruby Riot being buried right before our eyes. Well, he's back. The Big Show makes his return, but he doesn't compete in the match. But he was in his fighting gear, but it made me believe he was going to have a match, but no. He comes out to talk about the Connors Cure Superstar of Tomorrow. I don't really care about this, so I'm not going to talk about it. The AOP. The AOP come out and destroy two jobbers by the name of Ronnie Ace and Nathan Bradley. So they're just being called as AOP now. And people are complaining about it because... The Authors of Pain is not a name anymore. They're just called AOP. They're still called Authors of Pain. AOP still still stands for Authors of Pain. What do you think the What do you think the AOP stands for? Asses of Ass of Pricks, or or Authors of or, or Authors of Pussies. You, you so you think AOP stands for anything but Authors of Pain? You people are freaking dumb. Seriously. You people are freaking stupid. AOP is still Authors of Pain. Obviously, the Authors of Pain destroy these two jobbers. And Drake Maverick is still uh, their manager, which... I don't have a problem with I don't have a problem with it because people wanted the AOP to have a manager I said it too so people should be happy that they've got a manager just because it's not the manager you wanted doesn't mean you don't have to hate it Triple H addressed the Undertaker you know it's the same old stuff from last it's the same old stuff not really going to talk much about it. All I'll say is, is that it was a good promo, and hopefully, and hopefully we can settle it for sure when we get there. The B team invoked their rematch clause, and they, uh, and they lose to Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Then Dean and Seth attack after the match. So there you go. That's the only reason why they were booked. They, they are booked for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Kevin Owens attacked Tyler Breeze and revealed why he came back to the WWE. Well, isn't it quite obvious why you came back to the WWE? Because you'd be unemployed. 
Sure, maybe. Sure, maybe you'd be better. Sure, maybe some people would love would love it if you were in New Japan and Ring of Honor. But we all know this was storyline, so it doesn't really matter why you came back to WWE KO. It really doesn't matter. We had Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, as I'm going to be dubbing them. This is my name of Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. You can give them any other name you want. I'm going to be. They are dubbed as. In my language, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, I'm going to be dubbing their name as the Glorious Alpha. At least it's creative. At least it's not. At least it's not anything silly. At least it's not as stupid as the team name they gave Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. This is not. I may, I may, I may like Mandy, but I'm not a fan of their team name that they gave them. If you people don't know that, I'll tell you later. But Bobby Roode and Chad Gable defeat the Ascension once again. So they are so basically the Ascension, the Ascension are pretty much just like an updated version of Enhancement Talent. They're just an up, they're, they're just an updated version of 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 two jobbers like like the ones that AOP burst. Connor and Victor are just. An updated version of Enhancement Locals. They're just there to lose. I really, I really want to see... I really want to see WWE give the Ascension a chance. It sucks that these guys have been given absolutely no credibility at all since they came to the main roster. I just don't understand it. What the hell did the Ascension do backstage... To get all this heat. To get to, to never receive a push. I want to see these two guys succeed. And I want to see these two guys get pushed. They're a great team. Why isn't Vince giving these two guys an opportunity? These two, have, these two haven't been given a chance since they arrived. They've just been, they've just been the, the jobbers. That's all they've been. And it sucks. It really does. So as I'm dubbing Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, the Glorious Alpha get the win. Then we had our other so-called fighting champion, or fighting champion, I should say. We had our other so-called fighting champion, Ronda Rousey, and Natalia team up. Take on Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. Okay, at least that's a bit of a step up from Alicia Fox, at least. But, again, who cares? I mean... Look, I, I just don't care. I don't care about Ronda Rousey. It's the same old crap with her when she's competing. Now... There is one thing I did say on Twitter, and I will mention it now because the rest of it's pretty much just going to be negative at this point. I am very surprised that they actually had Ronda Rousey do something completely different. And this sparked a little interest, but not too much. Natalia and Ronda Rousey together did Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil Nineheart's tag team finishing move, the Heart Attack. Now, first off, that's cool, because it's Jimmy Anvil of Nine Hearts finishing move with Bret Hart. Two, Ronda Rousey did something other than an armbar and a judo throw. That's number two. But this is where things get down south here for me. If you're going to do something like that, pay homage. If you're going to pay homage like that, that's not how you do it. You do it as the finishing blow. You do that as the winning move. So why couldn't you have had Natalia and Ronda do that to Mickey and, and, and have that as the pinning blow? You know, that's not how you pay homage to somebody. I think that's not how you really pay an homage. Why do something like that? You're just going to use it as an as just like, oh yeah, we'll, oh yeah we'll, we'll tribute to your dad. And we'll just have Ronda Rousey win the match normally. So, I didn't like that. 
I really liked seeing Natalia and Ronda actually do some tag team wrestling, but it didn't help. It didn't help for me. They just did the move, and, and then everything just went back to normal. And WWE, man, oh, man, does WWE have a whole bunch of balls, man. They've got a shit ton of balls. Because they said that this is the first time ever in Ronda Rousey's career that this was the first time ever that she was ever in danger of losing. Or taking damage, as I call it. This is her first time ever in her career she's been taking taking damage. And she's on the ropes. She's on the defensive. Are you trying to take me as a full WWE? Who do you think I am? So, so what happened that Money in the Bank didn't exist? Is that what you're trying to tell me? It, it, as far as I remember, the one person that dealt so much damage to Ronda Rousey was Nia Jax! And Money in the Bank! So WWE's treating us like we're freaking retards, apparently. So we are... So, so apparently this match never happened. Nia and Ronda didn't happen. And Alexa Bliss, you know, cashed in... On some kind of ghost. She cashed in on some kind of ghost. Pretending to pin somebody. And Ronda Rousey did no, got, didn't, didn't take damage. Or, 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 did you, or, or did WWE think it was the other way around? Or did WWE think that Ronda was squashing Nia. And, and Alexa cashed in on a beaten and broken Nia Jax. How are WWE this stupid? And didn't Steph and also didn't Stephanie McMahon get a couple of blows on Ronda Rousey too at WrestleMania? How stupid does this company think we are? Seriously, this is the, the I don't understand how people can listen to this and say, "Oh yeah, Michael Cole is right. This is the first time Ronda Rousey has ever taken damage." Well, I, well, let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you people something right now. I guarantee you, when Evolution comes around, and they have Nikki Bella versus Ronda Rousey, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that they will make this match long on purpose. They will have Nikki Bella deal so much damage to Ronda Rousey and, 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 and beat down Ronda Rousey so much, and when the match is over... They are going to praise Nikki Bella. They're going to make Nikki Bella look like the greatest woman on earth because she gave Ronda Rousey the toughest challenge in her career. I guarantee you, when they announce this match, they are going to call Nikki Bella Ronda Rousey's greatest challenge. Or Ronda Rousey's greatest challenger. I guarantee you. And then when the match is over and Ronda Rousey, you know, takes a bunch of damage by Nikki Bella... They're going to praise Nikki Bella to the moon by saying that she took Ronda Rousey to her limit. I guarantee you that is exactly what WWE is going to do. I will be shocked if that is not how they push it. I guarantee you that's how they're going to push it. Well, obviously Ronda and Natalia get the win here over Bliss and Mickey James. Ronda gets Mickey James to submit, and that's that. Mick Foley revealed that he was the special guest referee. I've already talked about this, so I'm not going to continue. And we had Finn Balor versus Elias. I really did not care. Finn Balor got the win. And the final thing that happened was Roman Reigns attacked Braun Strowman. Ooh. Oh, I should really be excited for Hell in a Cell, since considering that Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman had a brawl. Oh, I should really be pumped. Please, I'm not pumped at all. I'm not even excited. This is a joke. That's all Monday Night Raw is. 
a joke. Anyway, guys, that is basically the end of this review. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Hit the thumbs up if you guys did enjoy the review. Comment your opinions down below on what are your thoughts on Monday Night Raw. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. And be sure to follow me on Twitter as well. Thank you all so much for joining me. And I'll see you all tomorrow for my SmackDown review. See you then.